What's happening, guys? Ronan Man here. We're having a little sleepover. Uh, got a friend here. Hey, what's up, guys? A little Gabe action, and we got uh, Drinking Dave over there somewhere. Although we're changing his name. His name is being slowly morphed because he doesn't drink anymore. <laughs> so we're going we're gonna to work it on that there. Uh, I think we had a couple of good ideas, and we'll see how that goes. All right, so today I want to talk about emerging technologies. And there's a good reason for this one. I'm telling you, everybody who listens to Running Man is going to love this episode. Uh, it's, it's very unique. Okay, so give me a chance here. Give me, let, me, let me break into it. So somebody, somebody watched the last Rare Earths video and they said something like, what do you think about, how do you take advantage of, of new technologies? Because like, obviously I like to keep up on new technologies. And I think it, it, this is a mindset that I think will serve you well in your life, in your career, in your basically understanding of the world. And I would say general, like the excitement of your life. I think it all is connected. You know, being an out-of-touch person or a kind of clueless old guy who's not wanted or doesn't really have anything to say, that's the exact opposite of the way that I live my life and want to live my life and want my any kind of friends like that. You know, so being in touch with what's going on, understanding new things and what's happening, even if you never... The, here's the thing. The question itself was kind of like, how do you take advantage of it? It's not like that. It's like not like how do you take advantage of being in great shape? It's like being in great shape is 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 an end upon itself. You sleep better, you feel better, you look better, like you think better. You're you, you obviously don't get injured as much. Uh, you know you you it's easier to like play with children and dogs and you know do things and help people and there's just in there's an endless amount of of uh, you know result good results from being in good shape and i think that understanding the world and when that like emerging technologies is is absolutely key and it's it's also i would say it's the most interesting uh story or byline of your life too because we all live in certain eras of technology so some of you guys are younger you're going to live you're going to live in different eras than i did right but it's it's this mindset will help you in any era, right? So, okay. So first thing is don't don't learn technologies or don't think about technology for any purpose. Like I want to make money in stocks. This will not. You will not. The reason why is you will not succeed that way because it's fake. Okay. So fake things will never help you. Or like when you're trying to shortcut or when you're just trying to like do something. It, it's almost like. A girl getting in shape to get a date or something. You know what I mean? It's like, it just doesn't work long term, right? She's going to, she's, it's going to be short term and then it's all going to fall apart, right? So how do I think about technologies? I I think there's, there's a bunch of things I'm going to throw at you. And one of them is, is that, okay, so I look at life in two different kind of ways of thinking. So one is the, you basically have, you have fiction and nonfiction, right? In books. And so fiction is people making up stories. So dudes in Hollywood writing stories, right? So they're trying to write, oh, there's this boy and he lost his dog. And it's just all imagination. And as much as I love imagination and I, I love like uh, dreams and things like that, imagination and sometimes is very boring and very stale. And it's almost like it's kind of tailor-made for like, People that have an axe to grind, SJWs and stuff, they're teaching you something. They're, you know, they have all these stories in there, but really they're just telling you that what they basically think, right? It's like there's certain message, you know, like telling you how to think. they're telling you how to think, right? They're giving you this kind of, they're giving you this a story and whatever they write, it's going to be kind of that same story. And I think that, I think that fiction has, has almost run its course in the world. Uh, not, not completely, but I've always been interested in nonfiction. I've never been into, I've never been into uh, like future books or fantasy. I, I see the real world as the most interesting story. You know, I see like, okay, so when I talk about new technologies, I'm not studying a technology in order to invest in it or to teach you about it. What I'm doing is I'm looking at things and I'm saying who's winning, like what's changing. Why do people choose this new thing? You know, because a lot of times it, 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 there's so many things involved. Like, well, for example, nuclear power. 
nuclear power is awesome. I love nuclear power and it has a bad name and all that. And I remember like people don't like nuclear power. They don't want a fucking nuclear power in their in their in their neighborhood. I think the only people and, that, that are scared of nuclear power are honestly like older people that were raised around that fear. I don't think anyone like my age thirty and below. No, I don't think no, scared of it at all. They do. They vote against it. People really? voting. Oh yeah, they will not. You cannot build the new nuclear plant. And I'm not. This is not a pitch on nuclear. I'm just telling you the, the way it works. So, for example, when you study emerging technologies, when you Essentially, think about how the world is going and why it's going that way. You have to look at all factors. And this makes you, I think, more mature as a man. So, for example, nuclear is great. In my mind, it's, the, it's a perfect, you know, I love, I like, uh, you know, high efficiency solar is cool. You know, I, I like nu- that kind of stuff. I, I, I think it's quite interesting, actually. I'd love to get a cyber truck with that thing on the back that gives you 20 miles of range a day, you know, that kind of stuff. Very cool. Very cool. In the future, that'll be awesome. It's getting better and better. Uh, but nuclear is right now really good, I think. But the thing is, is that people don't fucking like it. It's the same with hydrogen cars. They're very good. They're a good uh, substitute for gas cars. They're just as fast. They run perfectly clean. You know, they're, 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 hydrogen is like awesome. The thing is, nobody wants a hydrogen station in their house. Everybody wants like a big iPhone. That's what they want for their car is a big iPhone. And that's the way that consumers go. So when I talk about emergency technologies, I'm not looking at it from just an engineer's point of view or just a user's point of view. I'm looking at it from the way that people choose and which one's going to get mass adoption and why and humanity's tweaks and twists and weirdness that make things kind of overtake other things, you know, because because there's always like these interesting stories in technology. And, and so with nuclear power, I remember... I because my my dad worked in nuclear power, so I'm quite familiar with nuclear power. And I I remember, I remember thinking like people fucking because I hear all these stories, people protesting all the time. I remember because I, you know, I might know more about nuclear power than most people, but I remember knowing that there's a lot of people who hate nuclear power, right? And then the Fukushima happened and everything, and so Westinghouse was the leader in nuclear power. They knew that even though it was awesome and it was getting more and more better and better and like there was these like modular and there's like salt reactors and there's all these new technologies that are quite safe you know you know but even then they knew that nobody was going to let nobody was open minded in the near future for nuclear even for like modular safe automatic shutdown things people just didn't want to fucking hear about nuclear and when people don't want to hear about something they don't want to fucking hear about it they don't give a fuck. <laughs> it's like it's over for now, you know, until somebody revives it. And so they sold it to Toshiba for like billions of dollars. And they, but see, they secretly knew that even though it was the best, their technology, and that it was kind of the best thing for like any of the environmentalists and global movements, they knew that it would never be accepted. So, so Toshiba was so stupid because they just simply had their engineers look at it and say, this is a shit. This is going to be the solution for all these environmentalists, for all these people that want clean air, you know, which is probably everybody, right? They're like, this is the future. We got, we got, we have all these new technologies are much safer than before. But what they didn't take into account was human nature. So when you look at technologies, you have to understand everything. That's what I love about it. It takes a mature man to make a smart technology decision or to see the direction of the world because you have to understand how dumb people are and how dumb you are and how like your little tweaks and your weirdness you know w- you know what makes things actually happen and, and you get to a point where you're kind of wise where you kind of can see that's just not going to take off like that 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 is a great technology it's not going to take off that technology is missing something right i remember watching 3d porn uh, a friend of mine came to visit Bangkok about four years ago, and he had 3D porn. And I had heard about it, but I had never seen it. And so he, he gave me the, the headset. And I put it on, and it was like a weirdest feeling. I was watching it. I was like, it was strange. And I remember, and this is where it, it takes, you, you need wisdom as a person to do what I'm talking about, too. Because I, I, I put it on and, and he was like super into it. So he was like telling me, isn't that great? Isn't that hot what she's doing? Isn't that hot what's going on? And I, and I remember like I was what sitting, you, what are you guys I was, talking about? we're talking about 3D porn right now. 
And so I was I was sitting there with 3D porn glasses on, headphones, headset on. Nuclear power 3D porn? We went to nuclear power and now 3D porn. And I remember feeling like, you know, when I watch porn, uh, which I often do, whenever I have a girl, I always watch, I often have porn on at the same time, right? I'll pick a, a video that matches where we're at, right? And then, especially if I'm trying to get her to the next level of something, I'll put on a video that kind of like lays it out, right? Yeah, instructive in a way, you know. And it, it 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 seems to be if you just nail the right video, it just kind of brings makes it very natural to go there, right? And so anyway, I was doing this thing and I was watching this thing and I remember thinking something's wrong here. Like I was feeling a lot of pressure from my friend to say this was great. And and it was interesting because I knew it was a new technology. But then when I took it off, I thought well, something's wrong. What is wrong? What is wrong? What is wrong? I thought I'm not turned on. This doesn't turn me on at all. And so I, I said to him, I said, 3D porn will never take off. It's not erotic. He's like, what do you mean it's not erotic? It's a video, but it's even better than a video. I said, I, I don't know. I don't know the reason. You know, like, I don't, I can't tell you why. But I can tell you that I did not feel turned on. And when I watch porn, I feel turned on. You know, and he was like, whoa. Because he hadn't really thought about it. He was like thinking about more from a future technology perspective and opportunity. He was a guy from Singapore and he wanted to invest in it and do things with it. But I was like, dude, this thing doesn't turn me on at all. And he was like, and like he thought about it. And like we were talking later that day and he's like, he's like, damn, I, 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 he's like, it sounds crazy, but I never noticed that it's not actually sexy, you know. Now maybe it will be in the future, but so you need, you need an understanding of technology, other humans, and you need oh, an ability to, to really essentially think for yourself in an extreme way and be very decisive in order to follow technology. Because you can't let yourself get carried away by things that are not real. And I stick with that. I said that four years ago and I stick with it. And it looks like it's true because it hasn't taken off. And I'm so proud of myself because I said that that first fucking day after one minute of this, I'm like... Something's wrong. What is it? Feel inside yourself. What is going on here? What do you not, you know? And I just thought the whole thing's not sexy. I don't know what it is about the three D ness of it. It just seems very fake to me. They gotta get the smells down when they could get the smells out. You know, whatever. Maybe there'll be something. I doubt it. That sounds like another gimmick. They used to have smells in theaters in the old days. They had smells of popcorn and stuff, and like smells of like uh, what was it? You'd be watching a movie, and they had they 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 tried all this stuff. It's all gimmicks, never worked. So, and maybe it's too hard to do. I don't know. So the the thing about technologies is when you when you uh, follow what I'm talking about, you one it's more interesting. Life is interesting because you'll always be interested in new technologies. You just you're always like thinking for yourself, and it's like a journey. It's not like this fake following Netflix thing. You're, you're having to do hard lifting when you think, when you look at technologies. It's hard. And you'll look around you and everybody's just like an idiot. They're like, oh, I'm buying Apple. You know, something like that. And you're like totally in a different mindset. You might buy Apple for whatever reason. You know, I buy Apple uh, phones just because they're better for video, for Ronin Man. They do the best video. They don't do the best photography, but they do the best video and the best microphones. So that's why I choose Apple. Now, some people will look at my Apple phone and say, oh, that guy doesn't think. He's just an Apple fan. I'm not at all an Apple fan. I just, the video is the best. And, and also the sound is the best. So that's what I care about right now. That's my number one reason why I have a phone, right? So I make a decision and don't care actually what people think either. Because I, I can go get the most techie, you know, Android phone and try to impress techies, but that's not what I'm about. I'm, I'm like, what is my real needs right now? What am I doing? And why, right? And a lot of people don't know that Apple has the best video. A lot of people don't shoot video on phones, and they don't really realize. I shoot everything on an iPhone. I don't have any cameras at all. I just use an iPhone for every video. I have several YouTube channels, all one phone. That's it. And if I lose this phone, I get another fucking phone, right? So, okay, so technologies. What roads does it lead you down? How does it change your life? Caring about emerging technologies, what technologies are interesting right now? I think one of the interesting dramas, you say, fuck Netflix. What's an interesting drama for me right now is the transition from x86 architecture to ARM-based architecture. So x86 is basically most laptops are x86, all of them basically. 
uh, until now have been x86. And that's, that's an Intel design, Intel architecture that now AMD also uses. Uh, and I think there's a couple, I, there might be some other small uh, chip makers, but basically those are the two big ones. And there's a new one, and that's ARM. Now, what is ARM? And when I tell you the story of ARM, I'm not telling you anything from what anybody else told me. It's all the the result of my own thinking. And that is what, this is what is interesting and fun for me. So I watched ARM. I remember when I, I was walking through like a, a train station or something and there was like a TV there. And I was wondering like, that TV must have some kind of fucking computer in it, right? You know? And I was thinking, wonder what's in that TV, right? Why is it playing a video, right? And then I, and then nobody seemed to know what was in the TV, right? This is many, many years ago, decade, decades ago. And then finally I figured out there was a processor inside there. And it was a, and, and somebody said, well, it's like a toy, basically. And it was, it was, it was an ARM processor. Yeah, ARM processor. So ARM processors started out with almost like a joke, almost like a GIF or something. Like they could barely do anything. They were super, they were considered toys. They were considered a joke. Nobody thought, and this is the way emerging technologies are. Nobody thought this was going to be the winner. Because there's a bunch of smart guys trying to make vaccines, trying to make drugs, trying to make processors, trying to make cars, trying to make uh, energy storage units. Uh, you know, trying to do things, trying to make, uh, you know, rockets, trying to make, you know, all these things. But they, in the end, they don't determine who wins. It's it's this this crowd around us that all decides and amount of money and, you know, what resources you need to make that. That's another interesting part of the whole thing is where do you, what do you need to make that? Was it difficult to get that? Is it expensive? Where, do you, where is it? You know, how much is there? You know, who has it? You know, all these things matter when you're looking at a technology at the end, right? So ARM, I started watching ARM then, and I saw it was like in these little TVs, right? Then I then I remember like taxis in Shanghai had had TVs, right? My friend made a uh, advertising, the first advertising company for taxis in Shanghai. He made a ton of money uh, with this idea. He said, because all they had all these TVs and he said, why don't they have ads? And then he made this thing and then it was all running on ARM, right? So then ARM... Nobody kind of noticed ARM for a few decades or what, a few hundred million years. Not really, you know what I mean? But like in technology terms, it was for a long time. But the thing is, secretly, ARM was getting better. And x86, which is your laptop, all they could do essentially was get smaller and smaller and smaller, like Moore's Law. You know, Moore's Law is, I forget the exact thing, but basically... Uh, technology doubles every certain amount of years. But that's based on it getting smaller. And when something gets smaller, it also gets faster because there's less space, there's less time to go in between that. And also it gets it gets uh, cooler. So things getting smaller is good, basically, in, in processors, right? Smaller, cooler, better battery life, less energy dense, less energy you know, usage. Right? All that stuff's interesting. But see, Intel, uh, uh, x86 had gotten as small as it could get. And they, not as really, they're going to, of course, they'll make smaller ones. But essentially, Moore's Law died with the x86. So that, but, but people need a new technology. They need something that's faster and faster. They need, we need artificial intelligence. We need, you know, there's, there's like all this, it's technology, like humanity's driving in one direction, like a train. And we need something to power us. And that's, that's a processor that keeps getting faster and faster. We need that. For, for, for telemedicine, for artificial intelligence, for all this stuff, right? And so for space travel, for space exploration, you know. And so who's going to do that? So it's not even about Moore's Law anymore. It's like somebody's got to fucking outsmart Moore's Law, right? So we got all kinds of quantum computers. There's, there's, there's qubits. There's all these different technologies that will eventually probably win. Probably, but who knows, right? You know, Intel's got like a four qubit computer now, which is pretty solid, uh, but it's not very realistic to use those yet. And so what happened was the toy ended up winning. So how did the toy win? How did the toy? I think the toy is going to totally devastate x86 and take over almost every device. And this is not some huge prediction. If you're in, if you're in processors, you probably see most, a lot of people can see this, but the average person doesn't really know what's going on. But I think it's important to know because when you buy a device, 
you're basically putting your money on a horse. You, I remember the uh, the Pioneer laser discs, right? They were like huge, right? And they were like, I, I actually taught English at Pioneer at their laser disc factory in in uh, Saitama. So I knew all the engineers. I was right there in the middle of it, and it wasn't a very good technology. And DVDs, CDs came out, and then DVDs just destroyed the the Pioneer Laserdisc and almost destroyed Pioneer, right? Because they put all their money towards it, right? Their latest technology, their best engineers, but then it just didn't have the it didn't have the horsepower. Whereas, like Laserdisc is just, I mean, sorry, DVDs were just the shit for a while until uh, obviously uh, just plain storage, right? So, okay, so. Arm. Let me just give you Arm. I don't want to get too much into it. Arm started as a, as obviously as a toy, as a joke. No one took it seriously. No one looked at it. Everybody was like AMD, Intel. Um, so then Arm got better and better. And then Arm fucking went into fucking cell phones. And cell phones are all Arm. And this was the key thing that nobody really paid attention to. And cell phones got faster and faster and faster. My cell phone that I have here is an iPhone 7. And I process, I, I, I record and edit all my videos on my phone using iMovie for free. Very easily. And it's easier, for, it's easier for me to edit a video on my phone than it is on my laptop. My phone edits video faster than my laptop. I, when I realized that, I could not believe it. And if you probably don't even, most people don't even know that. But this is an old phone. This is an old ARM. It's probably an A12 uh, processor in here. Now the new one is A14A or something like that. So the new the new uh, 12s coming out next month. So how the fuck is that possible? That the processors are faster in my phone than it is in my laptop. So the reason why is because ARM's just getting better and better. Now ARM... Even though ARM pro, you know, covers, you know, is, is all the phones are ARM, nobody, for some reason, people have a blind spot, they could not see that it was eventually going to go to laptops. So Qualcomm is ARM, right? And ARM is based, it's a British company. It's British based. It's not really a company exactly, it kind of is, but it's, it's more of an open source type of company. It's more of a new it's what the way technology is going, like the way it was designed, the way it was collaborated. You know, ARM is like a better model for business too. Open source is better than closed source, closed you know companies. You know, you get more input, more people helping, more. It just it just the blind spots are seen easier. The the weaknesses are seen in open source. You know, kind of like this channel, we're open sourcing a lot of ideas here. Where a lot of people are putting in their ideas, they're listening. And they're, they're they're listening to my ideas, and they're saying, you know, I see a weakness in it. It's a good idea, but I see a weakness. And I, here's what I think. I think this, you know, and that's what I love about it. It's like I'm not telling you the way it is. I'm throwing out what I think has never been said before, an idea in a certain in in a way that's never been said before, concept. And then you're looking at it, going, oh, I like that. No, that's interesting, or I agree with that, or I don't. But here's here here's the way it could go next, or here's what's missing, or you know, you know something something, or here's another model that is even better, you know, and it, it's 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 like heavy lifting thinking all the time, right? So let's go back to ARM. So ARM was basically ARM and Qualcomm, and uh, also Huawei had a very good ARM chip uh, called the Kirin, Kirin processor, which was made by TSMC in in, in Thailand, Taiwan. But now Taiwan can't make it for them because of the U.S. restrictions because the Taiwanese company TSMC is using an American chip machine maker, basically, like manufacturing machine, to make it. And, and Trump said you can't use that anymore. No American machines can be used to make Huawei chips. So even though they've got a great processor, the Kirin processors is a good ARM processor. Very good. Uh, but you can't make it anymore. Because there's nobody else, nobody else besides American, like semicon makers, can make that level of quality and size. And you know, the the smallest that Chinese makers can make, like SMIC, can make a 14 nanometer. This is a seven, right? Seven nanometer, and it's going down to five, right? It's just amazing that the arm can get so small, right? So Moore's law continues with the arm. So now, while you were not looking. 
ARM took over your most important device, right? Your your phone. And there's many makers now. There's ARM. There's Qualcomm. There was uh, Huawei, right? And there's another interesting thing. So people were biased. I, I believe that computer scientists were biased on this one because they 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 saw just like Japanese products in the 60s were toys and they were shit shit quality in the 60s they always broke they were a joke people from that era had difficult time accepting that Japan had taken over in the 80s they just couldn't believe it cuz they're like Japan just makes shit like what are you guys talking about and they're like no Japan makes the most reliable cars look at the Civic and look at you know look at the Honda Corolla yeah, Toyota Corolla. Look at these things. They're they're amazing, right? And 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 the camcorders and all that that was happening, right? They they just were closed minded. They said Japan makes shit. What are you talking about? You know, Germany makes quality. America makes quality. Britain makes quality. Not Japan. You know. Meanwhile, young people like me, I was the the, the Japan era. That's why I moved to Japan. I was fascinated with Japanese technology. I I could see very clearly the old guys were fucked. Their minds were just so biased against Japan. Maybe because of the war, maybe because of history, whatever it was. I was like, Japan rocks. They are fucking blowing us away. We are idiots. That's what I thought. I was like, we Americans are fucking idiots. The Japanese are just killing us. Yeah, I got to go to Japan. I got to go with the winners, right? I got to learn this shit. I got to find out what's going on. So, and, and I studied all, the, all the, the great minds of Japan, Mr. Matsusha, Mr. Morita, all these guys, right? That, that basically made uh, Panasonic and made Sony and made all these companies that changed the world at that time, right? And so pros, I, I believe that, that a lot of people were biased against ARM because it was such a toy for so long. And meanwhile, it took over the iPhone. And a lot of those older guys, they don't really understand. They Well, now they do, but they didn't really understand the, the power of the iPhone. You don't really need a computer anymore. You know, you really don't. You know, your phone can do everything now. You know, I like to have both, but I, I know that it's not really necessary anymore. It's a one device world, really. You don't really need anything else. You just need the great phone and you can do everything. But, you know, pretty soon you're going to be able to, to, well, now you can already take your phone, you know, uh, what is it, throw it up on your TV and watch your phone in, in full screen and then, you know, and then connect a, uh, a keyboard to it. It's not really that practical yet, but it will be soon. Basically, it'll be one device world. That's, and that's, that's ARM's specialty is one device, right? One device is ARM all the way. Why? So, okay, ARM basically was started with the capacity to connect to the Internet. So x86 started before the Internet. So you have to have a modem, right? You have to have a – well, you need a modem on a phone, but it's different. But basically, just think of it – this – technology guy is going to be like this is not scientific but just think the way to think about it is this way is x86 is just it's a lonely island right whereas an arm is basically designed for the internet to be connected at all times so arm is the future for everything right all you know uh devices in your house and uh, Internet of Things, IoT, your phone, and also your laptop. And and here's what nobody fucking understood and most people do not understand today is that ARM is the future for fucking servers and data systems and data servers at Google and Amazon. Why? Okay, so this is what's really amazing. This is what's really hard to accept, actually. Well, x86 is x86 just, it's fucked. Okay, so ARM is quieter it's cooler, it's smaller, it's faster, better battery life or less electricity, whatever. And it's gotten powerful. And so why would, why would a toy take over servers? Servers are the opposite of toys. So when you look at a Dell business website, you know, you go to their Dell business website, it's very serious. It's all x86. It's all toast. Well, Dell's going to adapt. Don't worry. Dell's a smart company. But, you know, it's, it's like, it's like, uh, what was the old one? Uh, IBM used to have an old server technology. You guys, what was that? I can't can't believe I can't think of it. Anyway, AS four hundred. Dell had the uh, sorry, A IBM had the AS four hundred servers, like, and then those went the way of the dodo bird uh, when 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 um, everybody else took over, right? And the new technologies took over, right? So I think that x eighty six servers 
are just like AS 400s. You'll still have legacy guys. You'll have the old fucking, you know, you'll have the old skeleton guy out there running the old system for some dumb backup that you don't want to, you know, you know, microfiche type thing, right? But reality is everything's going to arm. Why? Because of less electricity. One of the biggest problems today is that data servers, data centers require so much electricity that it's insane. It's like insane how much electricity it takes to do a Google search and it takes to run these servers. So Google and Amazon have the smartest data scientists in the world there. And they noticed ARM and they started making servers secretly years ago because now ARM is powerful. ARM is cool. ARM is small. ARM is moving forward faster. ARM is... You know, it's just everything, arm, arm, arm. Now, of course, you have to rewrite the software. Okay, that's the hard part. You have to, there's a lot of hard work. You have to, to move to a new processor, to move to a new technology. All the software needs to be rewritten. And that's what's always hard, is you're trying to get society to change, basically. But it does change. It just takes time. AS400 to, the, to modern servers was, was a tough, tough transition. But eventually, there was enough motivation. And programmers don't like change. But the one thing programmers hate even more than change is losing their jobs. So in the end, they're like, fuck it. I got to go to the new technology. Otherwise, I'm not going to get a killer job, right? I'm not going to work at Tesla. I'm not going to work at any of these companies that are kicking ass, right? Uh, so they're making their own servers, ARM-based. These things are faster. These things are quieter. These things are cooler. These things are cheaper. And they're, they're, they're going to like, you'll see that server market changing overnight to ARMs in the near future, I, th- I believe. And this is my this is my belief based on the technology trend. But again, I'm not saying it's 100% going to happen. I think it's 100% going to happen. I mean, I have no fucking doubt. That's why I'm making this episode. I think it's amazing. I think it's cool. I think seeing how all the things are connected and all the smart minds are going together and the consumers and the the the, the needs like electricity and you know saving the environment. You know, we all want clean air, right? So we want to have less electricity used, right? We all want things better. You know, we all want a better life. That's the, in the end of the day, we all want a better life. Maybe we have different definitions, but we want a better life. And that is, you can never, you can always bet on that. It's always, everybody always wants a better life. So it's, once it's kind of been determined that this is the best choice given all factors, then it just kind of overnight goes in that direction. So, so, okay. So what is interesting about this is, is, is now that I've made this prediction, and I, I believe that when you use your investigative skills, your, your intelligence, your time, your kind of internal debating skills and with your friends, which also will weed out a bunch of dumb friends, because dumb people don't like to think about kind of stuff like this, because they'll say, well, I'm not into, I'm not in servers, I'm not in process, I don't give a fuck, you know, and that's fine. That's fine. I mean, I, I feel that way a lot about a lot of technologies. I'm not saying, like, go judge everybody. But there is a fucking line here. If your friends are not interested in what the fuck's going on in the world, there's a point when you got to fucking, for me, like, they're just not fucking interested. And what happens is you become the old guy who nobody cares about, doesn't know what's going on, talks about the old days. You know, you become a bystander. What's that called in games when you're not... A non something character, NPC. NPC, non-player you know, character. non-player character. You know, you're like a, a an extra in movies. And, you know, I don't want to. You know, I I I made a decision a long time ago that I am very interested in life, and I always want to know what's going on. And so it's not for investing technologies. It's not for career opportunities. It's not for friends. It's because I I like I like to. Be in the flow of life. You know, I always tell this story, but in high school, I was sitting at Mirror Lake underneath Half Dome, and it was it was summer. I was with the church group. We were up there. The water was ice cold, comes right off the glaciers, even in the summer. And nobody was in the water except for Tom, our youth minister. He jumped in the water. And nobody wanted to get in. It was freezing. It was a nice hot day, but it was freezing. And he was like playing around and obviously he's freezing his fucking ass off, right? It's fucking freezing, right? But he jumped in and he's like playing around, pretending like it's not cold. 
And I, and I remember thinking, like, after a while, I could tell he actually was having a good time. And I was, like, sitting there on the sidelines watching him. And one other guy jumped in. And I remember thinking, no matter how fucking cold it is, I could see the excitement and energy and enjoyment in their eyes. And I, and I looked at the people that weren't getting in the water. And they were just all kind of grumbling and totally different perspective on those guys. And I, I decided at that moment, I'm going to jump in the water of life, you know. I'm, I want to be a part of it. Like, I want to be that person that always jumps in, you know. And I, that, that is the metaphor for my entire life, you know. And that's why I make decisions that might surprise you. Like when I decided to have a kid, right. I decided that I wanted to jump into that river, okay. Now, a lot of people, I haven't fully explained it, so I understand why you don't understand it. Don't even try to understand it. But I, I wanted to jump in, a, in that river. I could see that river was a river that I was, like, afraid of, you know. It had never jumped into, you know, and the responsibilities and the whole the whole deal that comes with it, right? And I realized that that was a complicated, challenging, invigorating, frustrating, where you have to reach deep inside of yourself and you actually have to change. You can't just stay the same and reach inside. You, you reach inside, there's nothing in there. When you're really challenging yourself, you reach inside, there ain't fuck all there. You got to make it happen. You got to, you, you can't just, people say they reach inside. Oh God. If they say they're reaching inside, they're not really doing shit. Because that means that, that it's easy. They just reach inside and get it. Most of the things I reach in there, like I'm looking for a fucking grenade or a tool inside there and there ain't shit there. I'm like, I got to fucking figure out how to mine some minerals and make some shit and get some shit going. So I got some kind of tool that I can use here, you know, like I got to make some new, complicated, difficult, incredibly frustrating thing happen so that I can get a tool so I can do this new thing. I have to go back to the drawing board. You know, I need to I need another base base challenge of my manhood and my my intelligence and my capacities i need to challenge that in order to reach that challenge and to make that thing happen so i decided to f- jump in the stream of life and that no matter what it is in my life i want to be in life that's why when i walk by water i always want to jump in yesterday we went on a death dave's death march part 435 and we walked by the water and nobody was jumping in. And there was a golden, uh, there was a, what was it, uh, German Shepherd jumping in, taking huge logs out. He was a real great dog. And I just was dying not jumping in. I was just, <laughs> I just see the water. I just want to fucking jump in, right? Apparently somebody drowned there and they were saying, you're not supposed to jump in. But I, I wanted to jump in. For some reason, I didn't jump in yesterday. But again, it's, it's a metaphor. It's a metaphor. And, and, and you, you, if, 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 if this resonates with you, you want to know, you want to jump into everything, you want to understand everything. And when you, when you have this attitude towards everything, technology, uh, health, uh, women, relationships, uh, the, 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 the basics of your mind, you, 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 you go down these tracks of thinking that will lead you to new, new technologies. Data mining, data data analysis, artificial intelligence, um, predictions. Uh, and again, you're going down a road where you're going to be wrong a lot, right? Now, I'm not saying I'm right. That's the key thing here. You know, yeah, Dave's giving his dog an insulin shot, which I freaking hate watching. I, I don't know if I can watch this. Oh, dude, I can't watch shots. I hate shots. I hate shots. Um I'm like covering my eyes right now. <laughs> I'm not jumping in the stream of life with shots. <laughs> but but yeah, so so okay, so how how do you start? Is just look at yourself in your life where you're sitting on the sidelines and you're like in that grumbling, you know, kind of like you know that kind of sarcastic group of people who 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 just kind of like comes up with excuses why not to do something. Look, at, look inside yourself at the times, parts of your life, or the times as you go through your day that you're in that group. Are you part of that kind of grumbling group? Or are you jumping in? And of course, when you jump in, you look dumb, in a sense. It's easy. Like grumbling guys, they can always, they can always look at you and say, 
he's like like that's so immature that's just jump running around in the water you know i've done that before you know there's million 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 billion thing things people can say about you but in the end you just for me i just don't care i i i know that it to me it's death okay it's even more serious than just grumbling it's the road to death for me death of my mind death of my body death of my friendships because the reason why i have a lot of friends or the friends that they mean a lot to me is is i have friends a lot of friends too but i can actually talk like i'm talking now with my friends this is the way i talk with my fucking friends we talk about new technology they bring up stuff and and, and nobody's trying to impress anybody you, you get what i'm saying here nobody is trying to like be better than anybody they, 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 you're not doing this just to make money or even to think about money because it's understanding it's, it's it's using your brain to understand the flow of life and the flow of all the things around you even the arm itself when you understand that what i just explained you'll look at the the computer store totally differently you know and you'll say oh wow i can see like i certainly want to want wouldn't want to invest like i don't want to be the last guy to buy a horse and buggy right you know i certainly don't you don't want to be the last guy to buy a fancy horse and buggy with a fringe on the top right because that used to be the thing having a fringe like we, we, in the wind you know that was like a rich guy he had a fringe there's even a song about it in the movie in the musical oklahoma investing in a typewriter yeah. company yeah typewriter company a buggy a buggy whip company uh you know there's a great song in in a musical oklahoma uh buggy with a fringe on the top and you'll listen to it. It's like they're kind of describing like a new Tesla Model S, you know, or something like that. The plaid version, you know. It's like the coolest, most romantic, awesome fucking vehicle that existed at the time. You know, white horses, you know, a, a Surrey with a fringe on the top, right? You had it going on, man, at that time, right? And you don't want to be the last guy to invest in that, to buy that. You know, so I would rather have nothing in my house. Than a bunch of old stuff, you know. I don't like old stuff because it it makes me comfortable. I don't want to be comfortable. You know, I want to be uncomfortable at all times. <laughs> you know, that's why I'm sore right now because yesterday we did a death march for seven hours, and I'm sore today, and I love it. And I'm probably going to do wind sprints or go to the gym today, and I'm going to be even sore, right? And my mind gets sore from these thinking, right? But I look around here, this old technology, because. Dave's, Dave's, uh, this is his, dad, his dad's house, right? So there's a lot of stuff that his dad left here, you know? And like, I hate all this old stuff. You know, I hate seeing these things. I want to go to the, I want the one device with the latest thing for the best price, the smartest thing, and I want to learn how to use it while I can still be lazy, but I won't kind of thing, right? Because I'll always like ask these 19 year olds, like, how do I get this thing to, play my video from my phone up there and how do I do this and how do I eliminate that and how can I send a fax from my phone like I remember that I figured that out like 10 years ago and that was like the coolest thing I was like I sent a fax from my phone like 10 years ago I was like whoa this is fucking amazing you know I took a picture and I sent a fax and it came out the other end printed out you know I was like 10 years ago I was like wow that's so cool you know you know and 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 now now there's a lot of things but I'm always pushing myself to be able to do that and that leads me down new roads, which leads me to new, new things. And that leads me to talk about new things and think about new things. And in the end, what happens is you and the people that are attracted to you, your friends, they will, all you guys will be in that kind of mode where you're, you know, you're not just watching Netflix, right? You're, you're actually guys who are like learning new shit and you're in the fucking stream of things and you're attracting people that have a fucking brain and they're with the latest things and and then what'll happen is naturally just like being in shape has a million benefits you know you'll see the technology when tesla was was 297 recently you know i knew to buy tesla right i and I, I didn't have the money actually to i didn't i had the money but i didn't have the money i wanted to put into the stock market so i didn't buy it but it's now like whatever it is like a lot more than that right and it's going up more and it would have been a great investment uh, but at the same time, when you're with the stream of life, you're going to have so many opportunities to make money that you won't even regret missing a Tesla. Like, I don't even regret missing Tesla because I know I'm going to have another Tesla because I'm always finding out these new things. 
I'm always seeing things before the average person because I'm always doing this. So naturally, you're going to see these things. And I remember when I, when I joined one of the big internet companies, I worked as a sales manager for a large internet company. I'm not going to say the name, but uh, in Shanghai, because I could see that at that time, I could see my own weaknesses as a human. My weakness was this. I was into technology. I was into it. I was into you know my computer and everything, and I had my phone, and I was like update on the phone. I had I had passed those things. A lot of people my age were not like I was with those things. I was really fluid with those things, but I didn't understand big data. I didn't understand really like I didn't understand a top down view of the internet from the Google perspective, like Google, Amazon, Microsoft. Uh, you know, I didn't I didn't get the internet from that level. I, I can't really think of the word that describes those companies compared to small companies, but these are companies that they 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 have they 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 are essentially in the stream of life of the internet. They are the backbone, they are the, the fundamental what whatever we need in the future will be these type of companies will be the ones that will provide that, right? Because they're they're not just one small part of the internet. They're like large swaths. They have different swaths, right? One will have the social media swath, the Facebook. Other ones will have more of the, uh, architecture. the architecture. Or they'll have like yeah. hardware or like Google's like advertising. They basically, Facebook and Google basically own advertising now, right? So they took over from television. You know, they own, they essentially own the public mind and influence and sales and consumer behavior and all that stuff is all Google and Facebook. They know the real deal now. The, the smartest guys used to be uh, madmen. Now it's Google madmen. You know, it's these are the guys who really know what people buy, when they click, what time of day, what sex, what things affect it, what news makes it go up and down. You know, they know even more than the madmen. If you watch Mad Men, which I loved Mad Men, especially the first year, you know, they were like, he was amazing, but it was like just human nature. Now we're talking human nature, technology, uh, analytics. Analytics, you know, not just guessing what is going to be the latest thing that's going to make people buy. It's like it's getting more real now. You you can't fool people anymore. It's getting much harder to fool people. People are getting much smarter, and that's why analytics and and that stuff. It's getting even the smartest people rely on analytics because they don't know. That's the problem with the world today. You can't call anybody and say, hey, Grandpa, who, what's going to happen next? Who's going to get elected? Like, nobody knows, right? Nobody fucking knows things anymore. You, you know, that's the problem. Used to be people knew. There was like a, this group that knew, right? Today, it's, it's just less and less like that. You need to study analytics, use your own brain, and have smart people around you. Constantly admit ro- being wrong, you know. To even have a chance at knowing... Fuck all in this world. You need to be like that. That's not even to be smart. That's just to not be a fucking idiot. You know, you got to do that. So what I'm talking about is like pretty important stuff. So so I say uh, that's my mindset. I, I look forward to the discussion and the comments because I'm sure there's something I missed here. But and and I'm, I really appreciate the way that people analyze my analysis, you know, and, and, and that, that, that really, I really like, that's, that's what I fucking want. That's the whole fucking point here. You know what I mean? Is that you think too, you know? So I, I, I try to like put some yeast in the bread. So it starts rising and then, you know, there's more yeast and more effect. Obviously the metaphor dies at some level, but you know what I'm saying? Like, it's like it grows and grows and somebody else injects something in there. And eventually we learn new shit. That's, that's, that is the the real, you know, I broke away publicly, you know, from using the term MGTOW in my things because this is not, this is me. Like right now we're talking shit that like I'm into, like I'm, this is 100% and this will lead you to better understanding of women and also better understanding of how to go your own way or whatever it is that you want to do because your thinking will get better. Your basic brain will stay fresh, you know, and this stuff is like, if you don't use it, you lose it, right? It's really true, right? Look at high school athletes in their 50s who didn't work out. 
Look at women who were pretty when they're young and they didn't, you know, they let themselves go to, you know, this is, there's a million examples, houses that were not lived in, right? You know, don't, don't be that. Be the one who's always thinking you will make better decisions in every area of your life, you know, in, including all the concepts that we talked about or other guys talk about in other channels, you know, you'll make better decisions on that stuff even because you'll, 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 you'll be more able to lower ego. You know, knowing you're going to be wrong 99% of the time. How can you, if you're right 51% of the time, you're already a trillionaire. You're, if you're right 51% of the time, you are a trillionaire for sure from foreign exchange alone, not even stocks. You know, you probably are like a multi-trillionaire. You have more money than America over just seven years or 10 years. If you're right more than 51% of the time, you know. Right. It's just statistically accurate. You're going to be like insanely rich. You're going to, you have so much money, you will have all the money managers working for you. You'll basically suck all the technology out of Goldman Sachs just to work for you, to manage your investments, if you're right 51% of the time. It's just a matter of time that you will own everything in the world if you're right 51% of the time. Statistically, there's no stopping you, right? Because you're the only one who's ever done it, and you're right 51% of the time. And if you think, how much money do you actually have in the bank? Then you might think, well, maybe I'm not right 51%. <laughs> you know, maybe, 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 maybe. <laughs> you know, and, and, and that, and that, and again, that, that, that honesty allows you to have a sense of humor about yourself too, right? Because I've been wrong, right? I've been very wrong about stuff. Sometimes you're too early, right? You know, you can, be, nuclear power is a perfect example. You know, you, you were right about everything. But you're wrong about consumer behavior. You're wrong about one key thing that your brain is like, those fucking idiots should like it. They, it has been improved. It is safe now. The new technologies are safe. But that's not the way it fucking works because you're the idiot. Because you're the guy who's not seeing a factor that is human beings. Never forget that we are all human beings. That's the key thing to understand these things. You're not just an engineer. You're, you're a human being. And if you understand human nature and technology, then you get into a special category. Because then you're like really, you start to really look at, like no matter how good something is, how come no one's using it? Like I don't see that thing taking off. What the fuck is going on here? You know, and other people will be like, it's the best. It's always going to win. Betamax. I'll end on one story. If you guys don't know the Betamax VHS story, but when I when I was at, working at, at the stereo store, when I was in college, there was two VH there was two uh, was it VH was not VHS there was two VCR technologies, and that was that you could watch movies on tape right the first time you could record, you know which everybody hated because of copyright and you could like make home movies and watch them at home, you know make watch them on your TV it was amazing and that was amazing back then, and there was two technologies there was Betamax and there was VHS. And Betamax was better. I mean, there's no doubt about it. Go look at the Sony. It was the Sony technology. They invented it. It was better. It was smaller. Had less moving parts. It was more reliable. It was better quality audio. Much better quality audio. Smaller tapes. Smaller machine. Less parts. It looked cooler. It was better in every way. The video was better too. Everything was better. And it, it was just, it was just, you looked at a Betamax and they, and like, now you're not going to think this. But back then, they looked like a hot rod, man. They were fucking cool. And the VHS was this big, lumbering piece of shit that always broke and it was bad technology. But the difference was, and this is another interesting part of technology and adaption of technology, was that they did something different. The VHS was Panasonic. And Mr. Matsushita and those guys, they hoarded out, and that was a smart thing to do, because Sony was a cheapskate. They said you can't use beta; we're the only beta. And the reason why they knew they were better, they knew they were more reliable, cheaper, faster, everything. They knew they were going to win. They knew it, no doubt about it. They're going to fucking win because they're the best, and they were. And everybody loves Sony. It's a Sony. My friend wrote that, by the way. One of my very good friends wrote, "It's a Sony." Yeah. So anyway, that there was a famous uh, company logo and stuff or what do you call it that saying and and uh, anyway it made Sony uh, that was their best it was like the best thing they ever said like it was just easy like it's a Sony okay you know BMW was the ultimate driving machine you know there was these things like anyway so it's a Sony so they had nothing going wrong there 
But what was wrong? They were too, they didn't realize that they were going against the whole world. And I hope Tesla doesn't do this. Because no matter, if you win, but you won't share, the world will destroy you eventually. Even if they have shit technology. This is a basic fundamental thing. Nobody's going to let you take over the world. Don't ever forget it. You have to share. And VHS shared. They said, oh, you want our shitty technology? You can use it. Here it is for like two cents. You can make a VHS. And then everybody made VHSs. And all those companies together outpowered Sony, who had the better technology, the better brand name. But if they, they just, they would not fucking share. You know? So sharing is a key thing. Open source is, is our new, that is the new sharing. It's, it's not sharing, but it's that same, I, I think it's the same fundamental thing. It's like the difference between closed-minded thinking and open-minded thinking. Open mind, no matter how good your technology is, if you're too cheap or too greedy, you know, or too right, you're too fucking right. Sony, we're right. They're wrong. You know, that kind of thinking, like women are all this, men are all this. This type of thinking is not going to win. You will lose with this type of thinking, 100%. We live in a world of people. We live in a world of all kinds of people. And if you think you're going to win out by fucking over a lot of people or writing off a lot of people, you are sorely mistaken because they are going to gang up on you and take you down. And the thing is, it's your fault. It's your fault for not understanding the way things work. And it doesn't even matter if you're right or wrong. It doesn't matter. You can't have... It's, well, it's like, who is that guy? The, a famous saying on the deathbed. They said, you know, do you renounce the death? Oh, Machiavelli. I think it was Machiavelli. They asked him on his deathbed. You know, the priest said, do you renounce the devil? And he goes, this is no time to make new enemies. You know? <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know <laughs> you've got to be careful making two enemies. Like, like you... you, you, you it's not even careful. It's like, <clears throat> understand the basics of gravity. Understand the basics of energy dissipation. Understand the basics of human nature, right? No matter how right you are, you think you're so right. No matter how right you are, if you take everybody on, right, you're going to get killed. You're going to, you have to learn to work with people somehow. Even though they're imperfect, even though things around you are fucking fucked, even though everything's crazy on TV, you have to learn to work with people. Otherwise, you will be destroyed. They will gang up on you. And trust me, the, the, the forces and the, 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 the jabs from the, the like they're, someone's throwing like a ninja star at you, someone's throwing dust in your face, someone else is kicking you down the stairs, lightning bolts are hitting you, you know. Bullets are whizzing by you. Lasers are hitting you. Some kid is trying to distract you off a cliff. You know, like, you know, the, the dirt's falling out from underneath you. A rock's falling on your head. You know, there's, there's just like a million things. Snakes are trying to bite your legs. It's like, in the end, you just, you're taking everybody on at once. It's just ridiculous, you know. You have to learn to somehow, uh, and I think, I, 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 I mean, actually in jest when I'm talking about you're right. That's the thing. You're not right. 51%. You're not 51%. If you went to you know. Vegas 51% of the times, if you went to Vegas and you won 51% of the times, you just make your money there, right? You would just own Vegas. You would own the strip. You'd own every casino. Literally, you'd own everything. And, and then quickly, you'd own the world. Very quickly, 51%. You'd own the whole world. All the money that exists in the planet. But that you, somehow that never happens. It just never happens because humans don't like it. They don't like too much power concentrated in one place. So this is the this is the, the, the heart of the reason why you're not going to win that way. Is because even if you're right, and like I said, you're probably not right at 51% of the time, right? So even if you were right, you know, on an issue, and you probably are, I mean you're right on many issues, of course, but it's this this thinking is gonna kill you. You're not gonna win. You need to work with human beings. Welcome to the fucking world. You don't live in a cabin. You're not the Unabomber. You're out there working with people, going to work. Learn to work with these people. That's what I, that's what I, for anybody who 
is going down that lonely road of being right when you're not right. It's like a very, I, I say, take a step back. And, and, and don't take it too hard that you're doing that. I mean, a lot of men go down that road. Intelligent people go down that road because they see idiots around them. You know, it's it, it's pretty easy to see people making dumb decisions. You know, you see guys with taking Instagram pictures, falling off cliffs, right? I mean, there's obvious signs of lack of intelligence and lack of, you know, people taking pictures out of the car and then getting their head chopped off, you know, going through tunnels. But there's not as many of that as you probably as suspect. People are smarter than you think. The people that you're making fun of, you need to look around for somebody walking off a cliff with Instagram. Because there's a lot of happy people just walking around their phone on Instagram and not getting hit by cars and not running into people, even no matter how much you hate them. (laughs) No matter how much you think they're total idiots, there's a lot of people just doing just fine who who think completely different than you, you know. They spend all their time on social media. They do whatever it is that you hate that you think is just total idiocy, you know. And and spend all day watching yeah. Netflix. Yeah, watch well, on Netflix or right. Some some guy. I got a friend. You know, I make fun of Netflix, right? I I make I I got a friend. I'll just end on this. And he became rich watching TV. He became rich watching TV. I asked him. I said, "How the fuck did you?" He manufactured products, toys in Japan. I said, how did you get so rich? Like, how did you get so successful? He made the first Pokemon dolls. He made, you know, he just like, the guy just was on top of every trend. And, and, and now this is years ago, not today, but before the internet. He said, I watch TV. And I'm like, like, I'm like, did, I'm like, what are you talking about? You watch TV. He goes, I watch TV. And I'm like, I just like, I could not understand what he's talking about. Because he's not the kind of guy who watches TV. And I was like, what, what do you mean watch TV? He says, well, I watch what people talk about. I watch what ads come on. I see how excited people got about things. And he, he, by watching TV, he would make the first Pokemon dolls. Right? So he would just kind of watch. And so while two people are watching Netflix, one guy's planning to write a Netflix series and another guy's smoking a joint and just zoning out. Right? So you can do, you could be walking around with your Instagram live almost getting hit by a car at the same time as you could be building something important. You could be in a totally different mindset where you're lost in your own creativity and your own creation at the same time as somebody else could be just total idiot, right? So beware of judging everybody based on what they're doing. My friend got rich watching TV. I never forgot that. And then this is a real story. I'll call Mr. H. Anybody who knows Mr. H, my friends in Japan, You'll, you're going to know who I'm talking about. i got two good Japanese business friends, like big, big business guys, Mr. M and Mr. H, right? And Mr. H, is a, he's a production guy. He's, a, he's the guy who got me into factories. He's got me into like production and manufacturing and understanding the supply chain and going to China and watching people paint little eyelashes on little dolls and put together electric motorcycles and he got me into that whole thing why I did the one how to make things video right that all came from Mr. H my experience with Mr. H he he brought me into that world because I was not from that world I was from from California I was from the we don't need to make things anymore we'll send them to cheap countries poor countries they can make them there and we'll do high value finance and high value products services right Mr. H told me he said, you're an idiot. He goes, you need to make things. You need to understand how to make things. America's going down the wrong road, not making things. He said this way before everybody says it now. He was absolutely right. If you don't make things, you're never going to have a strong defense. Your defense is going to fall behind. This is why China's defense is rising so much. It's not just IP theft. They produce everything. They make everything. And, and that's, what, that's why U.S. won World War II. Was what was a big part in winning World War II. The real winner was, the real victor in World War II was the Russian winner. But I'm going to do that in another episode. So anyway, you got to be able to understand how things are made. And I think that got me also into another like whole rabbit hole of minerals, ingredients, technologies, laws, environments, countries, 
trading, tariffs. I mean, got me into the whole world of manufacturing. And, and I'm not saying I'm an expert on manufacturing, but I've certainly been to thousands of factories. I've talked to hundreds of factory owners, at least. I, maybe thousands. I, I've, been to, I've been to so many factories. And, and I've seen things made. I've seen things shipped. I've helped things get packed. I, I sold uh, flexi tanks. Uh, you know, I sold like integral parts of the uh, logistics uh, systems that we use today. Right. So I've talked to chemical. I've sold to chemical factories in China. I've seen that stuff. And, and I, 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 I tell you this. I'll end on this. I will finally end on this. Is it's more than just thinking. Go and do shit. Get a job driving a truck in a new industry. Like, for example, Tesla. Tesla has these new semis coming out. If I was a truck driver, I would be focused on being the first Tesla driver. Why? Tesla is going to be auto driving, but the laws won't have caught up yet. So there's going to be a need for somebody sitting in there. You're going to be in the most comfortable car with the best view, with the best screen, with with... In the, in the stream of life of technology, right? Passing by these dirty, dying technologies. You're going to know what's going on. You're going to know the companies that are using it. You're going to know more about Tesla. You're going to, you can become rich just driving a truck because you learn how things work. And then you open your own factory or you open your own, you get a job doing something that is in, that is important in the fundamental shift of something as simple as uh, warehouses, like how they change with elect- self-driving cars are going to change the way warehouses work. Everything's going to be robotic and self-driving, and that means that some warehouses won't work anymore, and some will be beneficial, right? When you're doing that truck, you're going to be seeing that. So no matter what shitty job you have now, it's not a shitty job. See, it's, it's your opportunity to learn something. You know, Gabe here goes to people's houses, right? You have a great opportunity to see how people really live. You have great opportunity to see a lot of things. And if you're not interested in life, if you're not jumping in the stream of life, you can just have a job like that, hate it, go home, get drunk. But I recommend whatever job you have, whatever job I ever had, I can tell you this. When I was a kid, I was learning about much more than anybody I was working with. I was always learning about new shit when I was working at just any shitty job, making pizza when I made pizza when I was 15. You know, I learned about so much stuff. I could open my own pizza place, you know, and I didn't want to. But, you know, I like I, I like always saw like, oh, wow, people buy pizzas. People come in a certain time. They do this. They do that. You know, and so y- the rabbit hole I'm talking about is your rabbit hole. Take advantage of wherever you are and whatever opportunities you have to go down the rabbit holes of technology. Don't follow my rabbit holes, although you might if they're interesting, you know, arm or whatever. But follow the rabbit holes that you are have access to is, is, a, is a good strategy because they're real for you. And you'll start writing down notes. You'll start like have a diary, right? Every day you get your, you know, Evernote out, put some notes. It's like I'm delivering things to this part of town. I realize you could be like a DoorDash guy, right? You're like, I realize people eat this kind of food and they do this and these type of people are at home and with COVID, now more less people do this, more people do that. You know, I see that there's a need for this. I see that's dying. I see this, I see that. And you're like, what do you see and what does that mean? That's the rabbit hole, the rabbit hole of life. And that will lead to technology and that will lead to opportunities for investment, for businesses, for careers, for opportunities, and it'll also make your life interesting, right? You know, I could be, I said before I could be in prison and I could enjoy it, and nobody believed me, but it doesn't matter. It's true. I'd be in prison, I'd be thinking, what an interesting place. <laughs> these things are private. What a great investment. Like, how do these things work? What's dumb about a prison? What's smart? You know, what's going on here? What do they need to know? How could you manage these things better? What's a better way to do it? How would you keep the people happier so they weren't protesting and angry all the time without spending a lot of money, but being safer? And how would you make them, you know, how are things not working now? Or what are people grumbling about? What is, I would be thinking the food, you know, the system, the structure. How could society be structured so that people didn't come here as much, so that less people were here? What countries do this better? What countries do this worse? 
Who comes here? What age are they? What What is their background? What do they usually come here for? How could you train? How could you teach kids so they didn't do this, so they didn't go down that road? That's what I would be thinking about, right? That'd be my rabbit hole. That'd be what I'd be learning about. And if I ever got out, I'd be fucking just, I'd be like very knowledgeable about the whole justice system, about the incarceration system. And I would have, I would go straight into some kind of business, technology, opportunity in that area. And I'd be like experienced, right? Because I'd be like, hey, I know this thing. Here is the way it's going to go, guys. I could pitch, pitch to investors. I'm like, these prisons suck. Everybody's pissed. Here's what's going on. And the investors would fucking listen to me too. And they would listen to you. So what I'm saying is go down the rabbit hole of whatever the fuck you've been through. I have never been to prison. I've never been arrested. I've never even been charged with a fucking misdemeanor. Okay, I have an absolutely clean record. So I don't know that. That's not my specialty. But if you did go down that specialty, you have a lot of inside knowledge that could lead you to be very, very rich. Because there's always a need for somebody who can... Society needs to do that better. We're doing a shitty job. Tons of money in that. And the government, they just throw money at that kind of stuff. So, I mean, there's no doubt there's real money there. So it comes from people that I would say, not from some straight guy who went to Harvard. It's going to come from some dude who went through the fucking thing. Either as a, as a, as a, as a, like a, a defendant, lawyer, or you know, a lawyer, or, you know, a prosecutor, or somebody who actually went through the system, or a prison guard, or a prison manager, an owner, investor in that prison. Somebody who's close to it, prison guard. Right? I had a friend who was a prison guard. You know, that those guys know, you know. So take whatever rabbit hole you whatever raw materials of knowledge tidbits that you have and start there. Start there with that mindset. Go into today and tomorrow at work with that mindset. Rather than I'm just gonna fucking hang in there, get drunk today and fucking, you know. So there you go. That's technologies. And I think, I believe, that will change your life and make it more interesting too. All right, guys, thanks for listening.